First, I'm really pleased to introduce our panel. So we'll start with Vivian Kay, who's the founder and CEO of Kinky Curly Yak. So Kinky Curly Yaki is a premium textured hair extensions brand for black women. Uh, I've been running it since 2012, a uh, multi-million dollar business, uh, and I'm a pretty dope lady. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jacqueline Rogers. I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm founder and CEO of Green Top Gifts. We bring diversity to celebrations with unique gift wraps, home decor, and apparel. Um, our characters and creations are Clarence Claus, our Black Santa, and our celebration characters. Yeah, I'm uh, Dana. I'm the founder and CEO of Ana Ono. Uh, we are boob inclusive lingerie that is seeking out to change the conversation of full equity and inclusion when it comes to an intimate department. So two boobs, one boob, no boobs or new boobs, we have you supported. All right, let's dive into our first question. When you first started your business, how did you go about finding suppliers and sourcing inventory? I started to find suppliers and manufacturers because I used Google. I didn't have a background in the category that I launched. And so uh, where some other panelists have worked in the industry for many years and are experts, I love stationery. I love to gift wrap. I knew what I like to purchase as a consumer, but I knew nothing about how to manufacture it. So I looked and read lots of articles. I looked at YouTube videos and I knew enough technical terms by the time I finished my research to call our manufacturers and suppliers and talk intelligently enough to them to get them to take a chance on helping us manufacture the products that we wanted. Um, so really researching the industry is what was helped me to launch our business. Um, well, our next question, Vivian, I'll actually start with you for this question. Uh, I'm wondering if you can tell us of a time when you needed to change suppliers or you needed to change where the inventory was coming from. So how did you find the new supplier and then end the first relationship and then also maintain consistent inventory across that transition. Now, there were times where they couldn't keep up with the demand. So then I tried to, you know, engage with other vendors. Um, but with the type of product that I sell again, a lot of my pro a lot of my customers are returning customers. So they'll return once a year or, you know, every six months or whatever the case may be. And they noticed. They were like, no, we don't, I don't want this. I want what you sent me last year. Um, and so then it's been really tough to bring in new vendors. So, um, you know, right now I've got three vendors and two of them I have been working with since 2012. And every single time I've tried to replace them, I get an influx of customers complaining that this isn't the same. And so it's like, okay, well, then you know that that's the way it goes but that's that's the thing so it really depends on the product that you're selling um and your customers if you've got returning customers and they notice things pay attention to that listen to the feedback if they don't like it guess what they're going to tell all their friends so changing suppliers can be because you outgrow a supplier i mean i've gone from making my product inside small factories in hong kong to moving them outside to shenzhen china to pulling them into the united states to transferring them into south america all in the last four years and you know there's this reality to say that like the the transition of all of those different locations on top of the suppliers and the materials that are accessible to each other at those locations have a very complex model that requires you to remain nimble. But like Vivian said, if you have loyal customers, if you're not looking for that one and done acquisition, your customers notice. And it's very interesting what they notice. It could be the quality of the garment, it could be, or the quality of the product. It could be the way it fits or the way it touches or the way it feels. And that onus is on you. And, and if you're a solo founder, if you're a small company, if you have a product development team, keeping that consistent as much as you possibly can is a key to your, there's problems that will relate to like your day to day. But if you're really looking to say, okay, maybe I was in a small supplier and now I need a larger supplier because my volume has outpaced this smaller supplier, give yourself double the amount of time that your supplier tells you that they need because they could tell you, we'll be done in three months. We'll be ready to ship. We'll be ready to take your order. I will tell you right now, it is a lie. So just take it and double it. Because if you don't have that buffer in your own schedule and you stop your orders from your current supplier because they told you three months, 
and you don't have three months of inventory, <laughs> it's, it's just that same problem I expressed earlier. You have no product to sell. I almost never assume that my factory is going to nail our fit on the first round. I assume they're going to at least take two and I will drop it if they don't hit it by the third, because at that point I'm out of time and I've now lost my production lead time due to the lack of product development. And so these things happen too. There could be fallout in your development cycle in order to get your production cycle on track. And then with production, with COVID, I, I can't stress enough the amount of over communication that you need with your facilities. If they tell you there's a date and they're gonna hit it and that date has come and gone and they haven't heard from you, you haven't followed up and you haven't chased them down, they're not gonna hit that date. So constantly having that communication. Are we on track for next week? Are we on track for later in the end of the week? Are we on track for tomorrow? Like it is that amount of over communication if you want to stay on schedule because likely you will not hear that they are late until they miss their date. Thank you so much. Those specific examples um, from both of you are so helpful. Um, appreciate Another it. Another thing too, yeah. I want to mention, yeah. knowing the holidays and the country you manufacture. I can tell you the holidays in China more than <laughs> I can tell you when the holidays are in the US, okay? Knowing those holidays because when they shut down, they shut down and it can impact your entire distribution. Thank you all so much. This has been such a fruitful conversation. I want to thank each of you for your insights.